in northwestern Canada. Stories of greed and violence, of overnight wealth and sudden death. One of these stories concerns a quiet young man who came north to claim an inheritance. Rex Allen stars as the Frontier Doctor. There you are, Susie. About a week, your baby doll's arm will be just as well as yours. Thank you, Dr. Bill. I'll make sure she doesn't climb any more trees. Goodbye, honey. Bye. Excuse me. Oh, that's quite all right, my dear. Quite all right. Dr. Baxter? Yes, sir. I'm, uh, I'm Edward Parsons from San Francisco. Did, uh, did you get my letter? Yes, I've been expecting you. Oh. Did you sit down? Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> well, it's, it's the first time I've been to a doctor's office <laughs> without being sick. Well, please accept my, my sympathy on the loss of your uncle. Thank you, but I never knew my Uncle David too well. He always lived in Canada. Well, I, I never met the gentleman either. But uh, as a lawyer, I find his, uh, his will quite peculiar. The necessity for secrecy made this will very, very complicated. You see, with two beneficiaries, it uh, was... Uh, two beneficiaries? Well, yes. He also wanted to uh, continue the support of an orphanage in King City. Under the terms of this will, he left uh, half his estate, uh, the gold mine, to you, and the other half to the orphanage, uh, the manager of which is uh, one Mary Ogden Fuller. That is a little complicated, isn't it? Yes, you'll, you'll find out why in a moment. <laughs> now, you see, this map uh, goes along with your, uh, with your copy of the will. It shows a trail up to the mine. Uh, but if you notice, it, it just has numbers on it. Along with Miss Fuller's half of the will, she has a list of names and places that correspond with each one of your numbers. Well, looks like I'll have to go see Miss Fuller. Yes, yes. I, I think you should go to Canada right away. The following Wednesday, I left Rising Springs on the first lap of the long journey north to British Columbia. Weeks later, after a voyage up the west coast, followed by two days' travel by rail, I reached the town of McLeod. There I wired ahead to inform Miss Fuller of my impending arrival and took a wagon the station master had rented for me the rest of the way to King City. Baxter left after he sent that telegram. He ought to be here. Yeah, I'm getting jumpy. Relax, Sam. Get the job done and you go back to Vancouver owning a third of a gold mine. There ain't nothing to worry about. Nobody knows what Baxter looks like. Yeah, but he's a doctor. Three years working in a prison hospital. You should know something about medicine. Well, I could throw a pretty good bluff, but I'm not sure about this one. Hey, there he comes. Why not meet you in town? Come on. Take his coat, there's a label in it. Here's the map. All you gotta do is get Mary Fuller to tell you what these numbers mean. We got ourselves a gold mine. What do we do with them? Throw them in the river. 
Suppose they find his body. I'll let them. They won't know who he is. thing I knew I was in the river. They stole my coat, my money, and all my papers. Where was this? On the road between here and McLeod. I'll get on it right away. What's your name? Bill Baxter. I'm a doctor. Dr. Baxter? Dr. Baxter got here two hours ago. What are you talking about? Sure, he's over at the orphanage right now. Where's the orphanage? The other side of the church. Man at the orphanage is a fake. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're so numb from cold and exposure, you don't know who you are. I know who I am. Joseph McDonald. Hello, Joe. And Kimo Menica. Glad to meet you. Kimo? Now, off to bed with you. Well, that's the lot, Dr. Baxter. Sixteen boys and twelve girls. Kima, I thought I told you to go to bed. I want medicine man to look at arm. What's the matter with her arm? Oh, it's just a little scratch. But if you don't mind looking at it. Of course not. Oh. Well, there does seem to be a little infection here, although it's not very serious. Do you have any antiseptic? Of course. Tell Mrs. Rayburn to put a little more of that medicine on your arm. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, Dr. Baxter, let's take a look at that map. Do you have the list of names that go with these numbers? To be on the safe side, I memorized the names and destroyed the list. Well, I hope you memorize them correctly, because if you didn't... Which one of you says he's Dr. Baxter? Must be you. That's my... Call. All right, now, just a minute. What are you talking about? Who are you? He claims he's Dr. Baxter. But that's ridiculous. This gentleman had plenty of identification papers. He stole them. He must be out of his mind. He could be, for all I know. He showed up half frozen, claimed he was held up and thrown in the river. And when he heard your name mentioned, he started shouting he was Dr. Baxter and could prove it. He couldn't possibly prove it. All right. I don't have any identification papers, and maybe I can't prove I'm Bill Baxter. But I think I can prove this man's not a doctor. Of course I'm a doctor. Where's the Incas and Stapes located? Uh, just below the chest. This man's no doctor. Any first-year medical student knows their bones forming part of the ear. Well, you couldn't prove it by me. I never heard of him. If there's another doctor in town, we can prove it. Well, there isn't. It's your word against his. Just a minute. Dr. Baxter sent me a telegram from McLeod. Can you tell me what it said? I certainly can, Miss Fuller. But let's let him try. Go ahead. Well, as I recall, my telegram said, uh, expect to arrive King City sometime Tuesday afternoon. Regards, Bill Baxter. That's right. Well, I guess that about does it. He could have got that information at the telegraph office, either here or in McLeod. Well, now that's kind of far-fetched. What do you need is a good night's sleep. You'd better go along with the sergeant. I'm sure you'll feel better in the morning. Yes, get him out of here before he becomes violent. 
Now, wait a minute. That's enough of that. Come on. I'm sorry, Miss Fuller, but that man is obviously mentally deficient. Well, you're the doctor. You should know. Oh, this commotion must have disturbed the children. Pardon me. I thought I was seeing a ghost. He couldn't possibly have lived through all that. He did. We'd better get out of town. No, the Maldives are on our side. By the time they straighten out things, we'll have the mine. By morning, I felt like one of those mice that scientists trick into having nervous breakdowns. Well, here's your breakfast. Got a pretty good cook across the street. There you go. Thank you. Sergeant? This man that claims he's Dr. Baxter, did he come to town in a wagon? I think so. I rented that wagon in McLeod. The station master can identify me. I'll look into that. Sergeant, have you seen Dr. Baxter? Well, he and Newbold were over at Rick's place just a minute ago having breakfast. Oh, thank heavens. What's the matter? One of my children has blood poisoning. Blood poisoning? Miss Fuller. this man treat that child for blood poisoning, she may need surgery. I'm sure the Dr. Baxter can handle it. Listen, his name is not Baxter. He's not even a doctor. If you don't listen to reason, you'll be guilty of manslaughter. He doesn't know anything about medicine. He could kill that child. Let me out of here and maybe I can help save her. Then you can lock me up for as long as you want to. You certainly sound sane enough this morning. You've about got me convinced. But you're not gonna touch that child without Miss Fuller's permission. I understand that. All right. Everything on the table for you, Doctor. This man must be crazy. Why did you bring him here? I wouldn't think of letting you touch Kima. Listen, Miss Fuller. In blood poisoning, opening the infected area and inserting a drain is a fairly simple operation when done by a competent physician left in the hands of an amateur should be plain murder. <laughs> He's frightening the child. You run this place. Why don't you order him out? Please get him out of here. Now, wait a minute. If you won't let me operate, please let me stay here. You may need me. I'll see that he doesn't interfere. Very well. Oh, it's all right, Kim. Everything will be just fine. Are you ready, doctor? Yes. Kima, I want you to breathe this in deeply. What is it? It's ether. It uh, doesn't smell very nice, but it'll put you to sleep and stop the pain. All right, now take a great big deep breath. At least he knows how to administer an anesthetic. Can't do it. Come on, Noble. You 
you can help me track him. together. We've got to finish this. I need your help. You're going to operate? Right now. You feel up to it? Yes, doctor. Sterilize that other scalpel. And she's still sleeping peacefully. Anesthetic hasn't worn off yet. I made you some coffee, Doctor. That ought to go good. You find the man? No. How's the little girl? I think she's gonna be fine. Fortunately, the infection didn't have time to spread too far. The drain, she should be in good shape in a few days. I feel like such a fool. That man might have killed the child. Well, uh, you don't feel half as foolish as I do. We were taken in, and I owe you an apology, Dr. Baxter. But I must say the man was convincing. I wonder who he was. Looks like his accomplice killed him to keep us from finding out. All I found on him were your identification papers, your map, and your watch. Thanks. A couple of my men are on the way over to take him out of here. We'll start for the mine the first thing in the morning. Well, first, you better take a look outside. Oh, no. If it's snowing this heavy here, it'll be a blizzard in the mountains. That means we have to wait till spring. Till spring? But it begins to snow, being in the mountains isn't healthy. Oh, you can still make it. I have dogs and a couple of sleds, and Joe LeClaire will come along with us to help us over the rough spots. Us? You mean you'd come too? Well, somebody's got to handle the sleds. <laughs> but if it's dangerous, I certainly can't ask you to come along. Well, Sergeant Richards exaggerated the danger. Besides, I know what this means to you. Sergeant, just how dangerous would it be? Well, new snow's tricky. If you go up high enough, you're likely to run into an avalanche. But then these people know as much about this country as I do. What do you think? you live lived around here a long time. Well, I say let's try it. If it looks bad, we can always turn back. Well, let's go. I want to thank you, Mr. Newbold, for helping us out. Well, don't thank me. I've been trying to make an impression with Mary for over a year. <laughs> this was too good a chance. Well, I guess I'll find Joe and line up the dogs, and we'll start as soon as it clears. Thanks a lot. How about some coffee, Sergeant? I need it, thank you. How'd it go? Great, you got him before he said more than a couple of words. Well, what do we do now? Well, this snow is giving us a break. They're gonna let us take him to the mine. Get the sleds packed and the dogs ready. It snowed all that day and the next, but the third day dawned cold and clear. All morning, as we climbed steadily up into the mountains, it grew colder and colder. It was noon by the time we reached Sheldon's cabin, where we stopped to have lunch and thaw out. This was our jump-off place. From here on, we had to rely on my map and Miss Fuller's memory. Colder in here than it is outside. Joe will fix a fire. Well, Joe, start a fire so we can warm up. While we're waiting, I better take a look at that map. Here you are. Here's where we are, at Sheldon's shack. That's number one. Number two is High Point. Number three... Is that an earthquake? Avalanche. Things like that happen around here very often? Quite often. The snow condition isn't as good as we thought. We better turn back. Sounded like half of the mountain came down. Well, no mine's worth risking our lives for. We're going back. We're going on. Frank, have you gone crazy? I've wanted that gold mine for a long time. I'm not going back now when I have a chance to get it. Then you were behind everything that happened. Yes. I hired a man to take Baxter's place. 
would have worked if that fool kid had stayed healthy. I just can't believe it. What are you going to do? Well, for the time being, you stay here with Joe. Mary's coming with me. Come on. I am not. And what's more, I'm certainly not going to translate any more of this map. Oh, yes, you will. Now, wait a minute. If she translates the map here, there'll be no need for her to go on with you. How do I know she'll do it right? She comes with me until I found the mine. Then what? We'll discuss that later. Joe, watch him. Don't worry. Had it all planned, didn't you? That's right. To play it safe, we're gonna wait a year before we claim the mine. A lot of things can happen in a year. What do you mean? By that time, Newbold will probably decide he doesn't want to share it. He wouldn't try anything like that. How are you gonna get rid of us? When they get back, you two are gonna have an accident. Avalanche, maybe. Sit down. Mind if I warm up first? No, go ahead. You had to come all this way for nothing. The way I figured, I'm lucky to be alive. We're all lucky. But the kids. They sure could have used that money. Well, don't you worry about those kids. The town will take care of them until spring. 
Why don't you come back after the thaw? I'll see that you find the mine. <laughs> Take a lot more than a gold mine to get me this far north again. Just give my share of it to the children. Goodbye, Mary. Goodbye, Bill. Good luck and thanks. Bye, Sergeant. Goodbye to Heather Baxter. The three men who sold their souls for gold were dead. Two killed by man-made guns, the third by fate. When spring came, I was sure Mary would find the gold mine and build a new school and hospital for the orphanage. I looked forward to getting home to rising springs where it would be warm and relatively peaceful. <laughs>